Welcome to the culture. We rest at the pulse of the community, providing all things news, music, fashion events, and everything that we talk about in between. It's a lifestyle. We are the culture. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Culture. I'm your host, Jessica Garrett Modkins, and today it is all about Jazz in the Gardens. We've got interviews from the top artists, from city officials, and more. Check out the show, and we'll keep it going. Here with Katrina Wilson, Councilwoman from Miami Gardens. Please tell us what's going on today in Miami Gardens. Oh, I would say it is the restart and the reboot of Jazz in the Gardens, which is our signature event. It was the one event started by then Mayor Shirley Gibson to put us on the map. And not only has it put us on the map, it has given us international exposure. And so we're excited after the pandemic to be starting something that we love so very, very much, both here locally and that is now loved around the United States. Yes, it is actually an international rave. What does this do locally for black Miamians? What, what, tell me, tell me, I know because I am, but what, what was the goal? You know, Miami Gardens has evolved into being the epicenter of black culture in South Florida. And as a result of that, we have been able to highlight the diversity of the diaspora that exists right here, from Haitian Americans to uh, Jamaican Americans, Bahamian Americans, people that are all across South Florida, the Caribbean, the whole nine yards. That has come together to be a cornucopia of all kinds of stuff. So when you come to Miami Gardens, you get a little bit of it all mixed together in a, like I say, in a cornucopia of just food, love, culture, dance, music, and swag. <laughs> now tell us, is there anything else you want people to know about your administration and what is going on and your goals here today? You know, I want people to know that we are committed to our community. We want to keep it our community. We want to make sure that we are the best in hospitality. We want to showcase what it is that we are about, what our forefathers of the city that founded it intentioned for us to be. That we can be a self-governing, predominantly black community that is thriving, that's hustling, that's bustling, and that's growing. And that is a significant part of the Miami-Dade County larger community and the South Florida larger community. Miami Gardens is on the map and it is a in the cap of this area here. I see brothers on stage right now. The Roots just killed it with Jazzy Jeff and T-Pain. And um, SWV been on the night. And the weather, we had a little weather. Storm passed. It is packed out there. It's sold out. Everybody's excited. And I'm having a good time on stage hosting like I've been for the past, I think, maybe seven or eight years now. That's what I was going to ask you. How yeah. many years? Yeah, I think I think I have to look back, but it could be eight. Yeah, so then uh, I hope that they keep me because I really look forward to it. Well, that was what I was going to ask. Why do you keep coming back? <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of fun, um, you know, hosting this event, being a radio person, a syndicated, national syndicated radio personality, and just able to talk about it and get people to come out. These people listen to you on the morning show, and now I can put a face with the... You know, you're on the microphone in the studio. Now I can see people's face. And uh, we're here together. I talk about it on the radio all week. And just to see all these people here and to have them excited. And to do comedy in between the acts. And uh, they're kind of setting it up where I could be funny. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Come on, give me a you play. <laughs> I know the Lord. <laughs> Oh, we'll make a way. Yes, he will. Yeah, come on, come on. Put your hands together. Ah, la, la, la. We'll make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Will you come right now? He'll make a way for me and you. Oh, Lord, we'll see you through. Ah, Lord, Lord. It's like that. I've been in the industry 32 years. I have absolutely nothing going on but blessing, going to church, cooking food, sitting on the porch, 
eating fruit, enjoying myself, and continue to set boundaries and be nice to everybody and do community service and enjoying life. Because let me tell you something. All these TV shows and movies and all that stuff, all that stuff ain't about nothing. It's, it's nice, but it's a lot of people at the in the cemetery right now chasing the star. And I'm not about to do it. It's time for the young comedians, the Jess Hilarious, the Desi Banks, the Country Wayne. It's time for a whole other generation of comics to step up. I'm, I work, I still perform here and there, but I'm not putting pressure on myself to compete with everybody else. And I mentor a lot of young comedians. So I'm just sitting back enjoying life. I'm really enjoying life. I'm at my best. Better than I ever, even when I was hosting BET Comic View, that don't compare to the joy that I'm having right now. I had the fame, but I didn't have the joy. Now I have the joy and some stuff paid off and I'm in a good space. And that's, that's a good way to be. When you have a peace of mind, you got your wonderful grandkids. I got two grandkids that I enjoy pushing on the swing, doing simple stuff. I'm good. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. At all. When I tell you I get off the air at 8:30 in the morning Central Time, and to go sit on the porch, and to be able to go and pick my grandson up at school, go get a snack, head home, watch Joy Reid, you know, and then watch uh, Don Don Lemon, and go to bed early and a glass of wine and some pasta simplicity at its best simplicity at its best so i just thank god for my life and for the opportunities uh that he has afforded to me and uh i'm just blessed can you look at the camera and say I'm You're here at Hard Rock Stadium for Jazz in the Gardens. What are you doing here today? Well, one of my proudest and first clients is Val Demings for Senate. So I have convinced Val, the member, if you will, that she needs to engage black and brown people long before the spring and summer months that the party usually gets at black people for get out the vote or tries to engage them. I told her that there's about to be 50,000 black people in a parking lot that you're going to totally miss if you're not here with a video message, with a booth, with surrogates. And, you know, coming from the Tom Jordan Morning Show and knowing that black candidates, the Democratic Party, have always had a tough time reaching out early and often to our constituents, I've had a lot of success trying to convince uh, Demings for Senate and some other candidates that now's the time. Let's reach out. Let's spend a little bit of dollars that go a long way if you reach out to your base now, earlier than later. And what will she be running for? State Senate. She's running against Marco Rubio, and she is a former police chief. She is a congresswoman in Orlando, Florida, and she is also my sorority sister from Delta Sigma Theta. She's from Florida State. She's a Lynx, and she's all the wonderful things that we would want in a strong black woman to be leader of the Senate and from the state of Florida. Oscar, what is her message to everyone? Her message is one of inclusiveness and authority. Like I said, she comes from actually a background of uh, 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 a former police chief. So when it comes to reforming everything that is going on with black and brown people with that relationship, her husband is actually chief of police in Orange County. They've actually got a lot of respect for what we're going through. In a, different kind of understanding. It's one thing to argue on how we need to reform our relationships with our community, but it's another thing to have somebody that's actually been in that position, that actually knows the laws, that actually knows the relationships. And again, she's a black female that has children, family, and all the relationships that we could come to appreciate as a people. Is there anything else you would like to provide that I haven't already asked you? I really want to encourage everybody to just get out there and exercise their right to vote. Listen, I, I worked for 20 years with the Tom Jordan Morning Show, and whether it was with, you know, Reverend Al, Reverend Jackson, Urban League, or NAACP, that was always our charge. And everything that we did, whether it was a Sky Show or a cruise, a lot of those, honestly, were just glorified get-out-the-vote campaigns. We registered 100,000 people in a single year in 2012, and that's something that we, we are missing that spark 
you know, maybe it's not in black radio and maybe there's other digital and other avenues that we can do starting with live activations. But I really want to encourage us not to give up. Listen, we've got uh, a black woman in the Supreme Court. We've got a black woman in the vice president. And we've got a black woman running for Senate statewide. And there's a real opportunity for us now. And I just want to do what everybody's been encouraged to do my entire time in communications. And that's, you know, get out and be active. So what can people look forward to seeing in your set tonight? Man, we spitting bars, we playing jazz, There's nothing left behind. I think our culture is so vast with how much things that we do, whether it's hip hop, soul, rock, jazz. I've been able to tour and perform with Michael TV Wonder and Prince. Everything that I learned for them will be in that show. I was a little slim little dude with the glasses, so I had to learn how to rank and get people off of me. So that was my mechanism, and then everybody fell in love with me by doing that. How long have you been doing it professionally? This year, I'll be 30 years. 30 years of stand up and promote my own shows for 30 years. What's next? What what can uh, your fans look forward to outside of seeing you at a comedy lounge? I want to own my own string of comedy lounges. I'm working on that. That's my five year plan to retire and book other brothers and sisters and promote them and, and build up my brand as being uh, one of the only few black owners of comedy clubs. We don't have any, really. We don't have a very few amount. And black comedy is the number one form of entertainment. But too bad our people don't profit off of ours, so that's what I want to do. And what's bringing you out here tonight? I see you brought the cold weather from Atlanta, because this is not what we do. But that's besides the point. Uh, what's going on with you tonight? Tonight I'm just chilling, man. Seeing a lot of friends, family, people I haven't seen in years. In a while, because some people don't come out a lot to events like this. And I'm glad tonight of this evening, this weekend, they came out to have a great time. That's what I love about it. Great music, great people, great food, great time. Well, I got three TV shows coming out this year. So I got the Fat Joe Show. I can't tell you what network yet, but me and P. Diddy, executive produce, right? Then I got a series. I put a book out in December. I'm going to put a book out. Series based on my tell you that's what show Kendra or uh, uh, Kenya Barris executive producing my series. Then I have a stand-up, a one-man stand show, and Dave Chappelle, executive. And so yesterday's price is not today's price. I do not play this. I am not playing with these people. Till the wheels fall off, I will not play with these people. I tell them, all my people, don't give up and push yourself even more because it will happen. And once it happens, push yourself even further because this is a different time. This our time. Remember that. How y'all feeling tonight? Oh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at Jazz in the Gardens. Come back and join us tonight for another edition of My Two Cents. Where we'll all come. Hey, come here, come here. We'll have the crew come in, grab a drink, cock your legs up for another good time. Are you going to be with us tonight on My Two Cents? Absolutely, absolutely. Come back and join us. Peace. The Culture is produced and owned by the Culture Media Group. It cannot be reproduced or broadcast without written consent. All rights reserved 2021.